welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. It's been um, a couple of years here covering the Aduro Clean Technology story. I have a couple of subject matter experts here. I've got the king of the uh, microcap space, Mariusz Goniecznia, as well as a subject matter expert on the topic, Yazan. We are going to talk about the news that rocked the world uh, with the uplisting, uh, as well as the newest collaboration. Before we get started here, folks, I want you to understand the intent here. The panel is um, is bullish on the name. Uh, we are all shareholders in the company, and I'd like to invite you to review the disclaimers at the bottom of this video. Um, I typically put my, my shareholding there for you to re review, but uh, it is incumbent upon you to do your own due diligence, your own research. The idea here is not to misconstrue facts, uh, rather share what we know and, and track the progress uh, that um, that this company is um, is on, uh, and as of recently has just accelerated, and we are very very excited about the news. I will turn it over to Yazan to kick off uh, this panel discussion for you guys. This is aimed for your benefit um, and to provide to you guys our interpretation of the latest news and, and where potentially we go from here. Yazan, awesome. Thank you, Ryan, for. The invite and uh, this is kind of like uh, the good times. Um, it's uh, it's definitely not been a quiet summer for the Aduro team. And uh, I second what Ryan said. We are long the stock, so obviously we have our, our own biases. But with that being put aside, I mean they um, the last few weeks have been definitely exciting and busy for the Aduro team. And uh, the U.S. listing is quite uh, fascinating to me um, because, you know, knowing the scene, um, I'm pretty sure this has been a few months in the works. And there, you know, whether it's this or the uh, the Total Energies, I mean, in the press release of Total Energies, they they explicitly explicitly said that this has been months in the works and after rigorous uh, testing they've decided to move to collaboration so we'll talk about that in a second but the u.s the u.s listing is quite interesting because um we keep saying the same thing you know we for the last three years of this company um the marketplace of where adura's shares are tradable um is I'm going to say it's a weak exchange. It's not, it's not a, you know, it's not ideal for growth capital. Um, it was fit for, for purpose during the, you know, the, I would say early side. Um, but, you know, if you want to get now, now that they've shown our two continuous flow, they've shown the yield results of 95%, they've shown um, six multi billion dollar companies, you need to get on an exchange that appreciates that you can't be like the comparison is just so opaque you're looking at the pure cycle that has a billion and a half in market cap um trades a million shares or, or rough um, a million to three million shares roughly seven to 21 million dollars us a day versus you know a duro that owns its ip owns its technology um has all the things that, that we know going on for it and it tr it just traded it's just started getting exciting uh following those two announcements so it started getting maybe a few hundred thousand shares of trading so it, it's it's time to kind of move up from this exchange to one where they they get the attention and uh and one thing that I think people will forget is, again, even today, we have 75 million shares out, of which 42% are owned by insiders. Now, insiders have done everything in my book that would allow them today to get their last tranche of their milestone, um, their last milestone. So they will be getting their last 13 million shares any day, in my opinion. And that's because they've you know, they sat above 65 million in market cap for a few months. They, they only had to be there for 30 days. They've been above that for a while. They have raised money above $105 million, which was another, another, they only had to check one, 
but this team doesn't want anyone to look back at them and say, oh, but you didn't do this. So they checked a few of them. One of them was also a collaboration. So they did that. And honestly, like, you know, they well, well deserved. But what does that mean? It means that after they get their shares, you're looking at roughly 87 million shares, 88 million shares, and 50% ownership by management. If we take today's price as an example, okay, it could be, you know, just for ease of, of this exercise. Now, uplisting is minimum is three US. You know, the, the minimum bid on uh, NYSE is three US based on public information. So, you know, let's say that they do a three for one reverse bid. Okay. So a three for one would make this literally, you're sitting at sub 30 million shares out with 50% owned by management. Now imagine, again, the point that I was saying earlier that the demand that will go out of the gate the minute that EF Hutton and they hired TCSA, which is a very well-known US investor relations kind of, you know, that has access to family funds, the, the likes. Imagine once they're able to talk to their network, what's going to happen? So they're going to close the raise, you know, whatever the raise is going to be for the IPO. And then the role is to tell the story. And as far as I know, um, the time between now the finding of F1 and accepting F1, they really have very little um, IR or outreach that they can do because, you know, they have to set the pricing. Uh, you want to make sure that the SEC, you're on the right side of the SEC. You don't want to be uh, pissing off, you know, a regulator. They're, they're doing their, their job. So until they get the acceptance, uh, you know, it's kind of a cool down period. So, you know, but again, going back to my point, there's only like, as using my assumptions, there will be less than 50 million shares floating. Imagine what happens. And you guys know what happens is typically if you have enough volatility, there will be an option chain opening, which results in even more share price up and down appreciation and the like. And, um, in that environment, you know, like with a million plus shares traded, a day, you know, you can guess where the valuation could go. Um, I have my own estimates, everyone might have, but we'll stick with what Airhead has said, which till today, we have, you know, anywhere between uh, 150 to 250 or 200% upside from here. And that's prior Airhead did not include the Total Energies collaboration. So that's my comment on the US listing. I'll pass down to Manish to talk about that and then we'll, we'll talk about the rest of the topics. Yeah, your colors appreciated, Yazan. Thank you. I know that provides significant value to um, to our viewers. Um, I as well have my thesis. I think we're stepping into quite a dynamic shakeup with both the, the share price and kind of stepping out of an old era into a new era here um, with the new listing interesting that you separate those two value propositions into two buckets, right? So I would imagine here, we're going to get into the total news because I, I actually think that really pushes the fundamental narrative for Aduro. But I want to turn it over to uh, Mariush. Before we do, I want to say on behalf of my audience, I want to thank you for your time in covering this story. And we'll put you on the main stage here and get your reaction to the latest news that's broke over the last, uh, last couple of weeks. Mariush. Okay. Well, I don't think I don't I don't think that's really what happened. I think what happened was that the management of Aduro listened to our previous interview and they heard me say that I'm ready to go to the moon and then they were like, "Well, we got to do something." So, how about listing in the US? <laughs> anyway, jokes aside, uh I mean, it's it's time. It's time for a company like this to do that because 
you know, I get uh, I get amazed and at the same time frustrated with the investors on the venture exchange because that's what it is. Canadian stock exchange and venture stock exchange are venture exchanges. And if you just look at the definition of a venture exchange, um, it's it's for companies to grow. It's for companies that you know have something interesting, startup companies, and those companies should be uh, you know looked at or treated differently. They shouldn't be treated as you know. Oh, it's not profitable yet. Oh, you know, or this or that, and and that's how these these investors on this exchange look at it, and they're like, oh, you know, it's too expensive or or it's cheap because it's trading at certain multiple, and they're missing the point. Is that companies like this? It's about it's about a solution. So so let's think about what the what kind of a problem do we have here in the world? Yes, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Aren't we producing 400 million tons of plastic per year? 450. 450. Okay, but let, let's let's keep the math simple. So, if you look at Aduro's presentation, there, the numbers, the revenue projections based on the size of uh, set size of the unit. The the revenue for the unit it's about one thousand dollars per ton. That's that's in the presentation, okay? So can somebody here do a calculation of four hundred million tons times a thousand? And can you give me a number? Uh, it's a lot of dough. It's basically almost uh, forty billion. No, it's four trillion dollars. Four trillion, you're right. Four you're trillion, right. right? So now, four trillion is a problem that we have in the world. Four trillion. That's a four trillion dollar problem. Right. And here we have a company that has a solution and nobody even nobody is even there close to the technology that Aduro has. Right. So and I'm not saying that Aduro's technology is going to be used to process 400 million tons of plastic. I'm just saying is that there's a problem. There's a four trillion dollar problem. And this is a company that has a solution for a four trillion dollar problem. So how much of this problem can be solved with this technology and how much do you think a technology like this is worth to society to wall street to people do you, do you, do you think it's a good idea to price it at 100 million 200 million i mean it's outrageous right so anybody looking at this is like you know what i'm an entrepreneur i see this huge problem i see this technology that can solve it part of it big part of it whatever it's a lot of dough like how much, how much is it worth to me? How much am I willing to pay for this? And we have, as some of you know, I used to be a real estate appraiser and to appraise a property, like if it's a commercial property, you look at the income statement, you look at comparable properties, you look at the cost, the, the cost approach. Like when I did the interview with, uh, with the offer, he, he, he told me what the breakup value would be, you know, about 200 million. Okay, that's kind of like a cost approach. Uh, the income approach, we can be like, uh, you know, it's a $4 trillion problem. W how much of that can we capture? But we also have comparables that we can look at. And Yazan just said, there's a company out there, Pure Cycle, that doesn't have a technology that's even close to us, doesn't even own the IP, has one, 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 uh, one plant, and they have a market cap of $1.5 and if I'm not mistaken, at some point they were valued at eight billion dollars. So, yeah, am I am I correct? They were valued at eight billion dollars at one point. So that gives me an idea of how excited the market can be for a possible solution. And so now coming to Nasdaq uh, with 15 million shares that are, are available for a float after the rollback, like can we reach a billion dollar valuation that would be ten dollars per share uh pre-rollback can we reach ten billion dollar valuation that would be a hundred dollars like 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 none of these numbers would be crazy if you compare it to the the problem that this technology solves and and, and i don't know what the number is uh but none of this would be crazy and what i do know is the valuation today is insane 
in relation uh, insane to the downside to the cheapness in relation what this thing can do for the world and when it goes on nasdaq and everybody can not nasdaq new york stock exchange everybody can trade it everybody with a robin hood account can buy it and if it's 15 million shares you can't buy half a share uh if it's 15 million shares available i mean it could get completely out of control and and that's what that's what people that look at the stock today they don't understand what can happen like like if you present something like this to jim kramer from uh, you know med money you don't think he'd be freaking excited to talk about this i mean how can you not be excited to talk about you know solving the the problem i can be the i can be the savior of the world how can you not talk about this guy how can you not want to talk about this company like i go to bed dreaming yeah. about how great things are in owning this company like like this company can catch fire and there's not a lot of shares available you know so anyway that's that's my thought on it you know yeah if i may carry that that thought also um it's a, also important to understand like when mary is just saying um what's happening in the landscape so if we use that 450 million um tons of waste plastic just to remind everyone less than 10 percent of that gets recycled okay so we have over the years in the last 20 plus years we've accumulated also 8 billion tons of waste plastic so i have shared with you guys um yesterday a chart that shows you um by nova uh, chemicals they were showing how much uh chemical advanced chemical recycling plants and recycling is coming online and by the year 2027 2028 there will be 700,000 tons if everything goes well 700,000 tons recycled so anyone that comes in and keeps saying, well, you know, we don't know if uh, there is like competition. That's nice because, you know, you have a 400 and plus million that's that no one's touching. You have 90 percent, 70 percent of this waste plastic is contaminated. No one, no one wants to touch. So do you want to be like you want to talk about the elephant in the room, which is the rest of that plastic, that waste that no one's touching? Or do you want to be stuck at, no, 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 but the financials, the economics, the right now. And the right now is like almost irrelevant because all the others, other one singular, um, you know, plant companies, they are all getting funded by VCs and so on. And they're getting decent valuations and no one's saying no 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 but you're not profitable now like so what you're having a solution to um, to uh, to a major problem that everyone needs to have a solution for um i mean and let, let me just stop you for a second for a second Yazan. so yeah. i i did the calculation and i i'm wrong it's not four trillion it's 400 billion uh so i just wanted to to correct that uh that that's what that's what i should have said that's the size of the problem yeah. So uh, in any case, I mean, 400 billion, but again, that, that we're talking about just the plastic waste. And then we skipped rubber tires, we skipped bitumen, we skipped renewables, we skipped pretty much everything. So um, so the room for the upside is massive. What, what I guess Marish is saying is, look, you always, when you're in the investment thesis, always looks at what is my downside protection? It, again, I'm, I'm going to just use a quotation from Arrowhead before um, before the total and before the recent advancements. And they were saying that 100 million US is roughly the IP. It, it, that's their valuation. Management thinks it's 200, you know, take whatever. So we are trading at kind of the, like that downside protection. We're trading there. So we're not putting any value for anything that has happened. So I think that approach is, you know, not for growth stocks. That approach is more for like liquidation kind of thing. So, which is not the case. Now, the other thing which is also important is just to put in context what I was saying. So if 
the entire world by 2027, 2028 is going to recycle or have seven, eight hundred thousand tons of plastic waste recycled advanced via advanced chemical recycling. That's not even half a percent. Like you see, like it's, it's mind boggling what market share you can go after. And we're not talking about the other thing that is amazing. And I guess I'm going to switch gears to talk. The amazing thing for us as shareholders of Adro is the following. What I love about what Ofer and the team have done is that till today, we have remained independent. And guess what? This week we got a major check mark from a $160 billion company. That check mark did not say in the press release that there is some you know, exclusivity. They didn't say that they will own part of the IP. They didn't say any of that. So now we have a $160 billion gorilla that is fighting on, on our side. I know a lot of people are like, okay, well, how much revenue are they going to get out of it? That is, in my opinion, the wrong way of looking at it. There will be revenue, which is great, but the amount of in kind, which no one knows what it is, but I, I can think of it that to me is way more important because suddenly i have endless resources going from um, the number six petrochem producer of plastic that wants to have a solution we're not talking about a new player um these guys have a plan to recycle 30 percent of waste of their own plastic by the end of 2030 um, we're talking about a player that has already uh, looked at other all the other technologies. In fact, they have two investments in two other technologies that are mainly pyrolysis. So despite that, they decided that Aduro is needed in to, to collaborate with. So this is why it's such a big deal. Such a big deal because despite their prior commitments. I mean, this is what we keep saying is, you know, at one point you can't keep this to yourself. And now one thing that Marisha said in his video, I think was if you are one of the other six multi-billion dollar companies, if you are one of the companies that have been working with Aduro silently without a contract, without being announced, do you really want to be you know, um, picky, can you become as picky as you were before? Like prior to this, you know, probably you, you could have dictated some terms. You could have like said, I want this city, I want this, I want that. But post this, you're kind of like, you're stuck in a, in a tougher spot and, and the upper, the upper hand is slowly getting to Aduro's side. Which is why I like this dynamic of independence that, you know, we are where we are. We are in, you know, um, a different mindset. And soon, once you are on a bigger exchange, guess what? You know, all these people that own Total or own this or own that, all the sustainability funds, all that, they want to be part of this. Why wouldn't you be? This is a very exciting th thing to be part of. I mean, like think think of any um, ETF that has to do with sustainability. Do they not want to have part of a solution to one of the biggest world problems? Like they they're like, no, no, we're, we're good. We're, we don't want to, <laughs> we're covered here. So I, I think it's fascinating. Just real quick, Yazan, I think, and my audience gets my opinion all the time on this topic. I'm humbled at the opportunity when the announcement broke, at least to uplist for me, um, it even more solidified my conviction to hold long. Um, I, I want to premise for existing shareholders out there that there will probably be uh, some short-sighted selling out there. And I do say short-sighted because I look at 40 bips uh, on this appreciation and it means really nothing to me. 
it's nice to see the share accumulation increase, but the magnitude of these two announcements for different reasons in my interpretation um, has just solidified not only my stock holding, but reaffirmed my trust in this management in delivering on what they promise they are going to do. And, and that, my friends, in the stock market in general is a very, very rare and very, very powerful commodity. Um, and, and until proven otherwise, um, you know, I've listened to the projections, I've listened to Ofer outline the yearly goals, and quite frankly, I'm happy for 2024. I mean, I, I'm happy, right? Whatever transpires over the next few months, I am satisfied. It couldn't have been any better than Total Energy. I am not surprised that it is domiciled in Europe, and Europe is the first mover on this topic, which has its inherent benefits because it, it, it seems as if they are on the cutting edge and the front edge of this problem. So not only from an access perspective on the uplisting and then a value proposition on the total announcement, you have two dynamic forces that have put a shock through the stock. And here we are in a couple of months, we're going to close down the envelope on ACTHF and we're going to open up a whole new chapter of trading. And my friends, you thought you needed to buckle your seatbelt for the last couple of years. Wait for the next evolution of this company because this shakeup is going to be amazing. The availability is going to put a network on notice immediately when this thing IPOs to the New York Stock Exchange. I would encourage everybody to make their own decisions, but absolutely be patient and do not be premature on 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 exiting this because I think where a lot of people think we're in the latter eighth inning, I actually think we're in the bottom of the first. I'll turn it over to Mariush. You know, I actually, I actually have a question uh, to you, Ryan, because. Please. You are you are a uh, you know a stock market investor, but you kind of got introduced to this world of microcap stocks, you know, through us, through me. I and am not a micro. I am not a microcap investor. Right. Uh, that I mean that is most, absolutely true. Right. So you know, it's I am all in it, and you you <clears throat> for you it's just part of it. And now, like you you've seen you've seen some things. You've seen Aduro. You've seen Plurilac. You've seen things now do you understand now why we are in this space now after you see what, what you've seen i i do uh, you know um it, it's it's interesting to phrase it that way i've i've got um many many years of of stock market ups and downs and the beauty of social media is that I, I wouldn't have been introduced to the power of an opportunity like a neuro clean technology if it wasn't for you two gentlemen and the continued efforts of Penny and a few other isolated uh, opportunities where people like me who would have never been provided that are provided that access through information. And if the discerning mind can pick up on that and realize that I think what you are doing specifically, Mariush, is defining a blue ocean, okay? It's coupling a discarded market for many, many years and some justification to that as to why those uh, uh, perceptions about the OTC markets and, and microcap investing exist, right? But I think through the right lens and the right evaluation you're not going to be right on everything, but what you're doing is kind of on the fly, writing a playbook so that people can perhaps maybe putting all of their you know life savings on lottery tickets every single week. Maybe they can explore other options, okay? People in this country specifically are getting poorer and the rich are getting richer, okay? Either you want to stick your head in the sand and be naive to that fact, or you want to educate yourself up on what are the activities that the wealthy are engaging in and what is their mindset to justify engaging on, on this. 
And to speak about your question to me, I, I think there are deficiencies in the microcap space. I think there's a level of psychology that must be had. And I don't know if it's necessarily scalable to the masses. But as far as mixing my longstanding capability in the market and looking at an opportunity, I was sold from day one. Mariush, I was looking at a Duro from 52. Unfortunately, the game changer announcement came and I picked up my first share shares at 62 cents, right? But I, I was sold right away prior to the game changer announcement. And I, I just think in summary, people need to stop being so emotional about stock market investing. What if we were the opposite side? What if a Duro hadn't have worked out? Would I have just you would have been the worst thing ever, right? And I would have come onto social media and said, you're terrible. What we need to show is a lot more appreciation for the people like you who are in battles every single day with people on social media, coming on, telling you that you don't know what you're talking about. Well, you do. And I have, I've seen it with more opportunities than just a Duro, Mariush. Yeah, you've had your bad beats and that comes with the territory. But people have to understand the game that they are getting involved with before they get involved. And if they're ill-prepared to do it, I would just rather those people not be involved and look to educate themselves up on the topic. No, I agree. And, you know, your point to uh, if this is scalable, uh, there's only so, so many people that you can fit into each opportunity because, you know, we people are used to, oh, I'm going to buy Tesla, NVIDIA, and I can buy as much as I want, as much as I want. That's not, that's not the case here. But, you know, the, the financial industry is in the business of gathering assets. And hedge funds, mutual funds, they manage billions of dollars worth of assets from individuals. And then those assets, it's like, you know, you have to have a big well to put those assets in. So they have to you know, go after the Microsofts, the Teslas, NVIDIAs, they have to. But, you know, if you're an individual, you know, uh, putting your money together with other individuals to go after big opportunities is actually a disadvantage. If, if you want to roll up your sleeves, if you want to do your due diligence, you can do quite well, you know, going after those opportunities. I mean, think about what Warren Buffett said when he was asked what he would do if he was young with $10,000. He didn't say he would buy Nvidia. He said he would go after obscure opportunities, which is exactly what we're doing. Um, and, you know, I say that being in this space is, is like you're a freaking mat you're a matador fighting with a bull every day. And, and, you know, and then you have people in the audience having opinions every day on what you should do, how stupid you are, you know, uh, and you've seen, you've seen ex exactly that. But now I'm thinking about like, for example, your own portfolio, I kind of have, I kind of have an idea of how many shares of Aduro you have because you, you, you publicize this, but it's not, I don't think it's too far away that if you held on to all your shares, Aduro becomes 50% of your portfolio. And that's quite remarkable that for, for anybody to be able to do that. I think, I think I will say this, and I've, I've declared this through social media and a lot of people know this about me. Um, I, I don't come from money. I, I've been given nothing. I've had my bad beats. I've, you know, um, you know, I've, 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 I've had my trials, tribulations through experience in the market and I think when I look at a Duro, I've got 117,500 shares right now, right? Those will restructure and that share count will, will reduce, right? From, from a share price and a, and a share accumulation basis, right? Um, what's going to happen? I don't know. I'm, I'm eagerly waiting for the prospectus. And I hope all share owners out there are eagerly waiting the prospectus on how the share restructure uh, is going to 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 shake out. Yazan, you you mentioned, you know, perhaps maybe the fifty million in the float existing. Um, I, I would presume there's an opportunity to issue new shares. Do you have any insight on that at all? 
because what you're talking about is just existing shares right through the the reverse which is atypical right this reverse or i i like to call it ipo because you know typically a reverse comes out of weakness right to to consolidate aduro doesn't have a lot of shares to consolidate so to make room for new investors, which we know is out there, is that something that we could expect? And again, I don't want to dabble in dialogue, but it's all kind of up in the air right now as to how this restructuring is going to happen. I think the opportunity is going to tell us a lot about who's going to be interested when the volume picks up. But do you have any insight on that? Yeah. Um, uh, I have looked at all the recent uh, EF Hutton transactions. Um, and I'm going to use that as my benchmark because that's kind of, they are number one in, uh, IPOs, um, you know, since 2022. So I'll say that what I've seen, um, obviously they're, they're not engaged to be, uh, in the business of, uh, just helping the company go public. They obviously want to take care of their book and everyone talks to talks their book. They are, as I said, in this environment where until the F1 is approved, they are unable to speak to their clients. So, um, which in itself offers a very unique uh, opportunity for existing shareholders on CSC OTC because, you know, you are, um, it's uncommon. It's like you are able to buy pre IPO uh, on a, you know, a hot offering that's coming up. So it, it is unique. Now, the other piece of the puzzle is how much did they raise? So um, what I've seen is the average ticket um, that they've done is between five to $10 million US. Uh, there was a filing that is not on the SCC. So I'm not sure if it's uh, right or wrong, but it said 6 million US. So I'm assuming that you know, we're, we're in that range, five to 10 million US is what they're going to be raising post the restructure. The restructure is not, a, uh, as, as you correctly mentioned, the restructure uh, or the reverse is just for the sake of meeting the threshold by the, whether it's NYSE or NASDAQ or whatever the US exchange. Um, having said that, there's nothing prohibitive of if the share price is already there, they could, you know, basically be be there. So um, we're not going to speculate. We're not here to speculate about what happens in the next, you know, two three months. God knows how long it takes, but two three months is my expectation. Could be wrong. Could be right. Um, but it does offer existing shareholders the opportunity and new shareholders the opportunity to come in prior to that. Um, and again, I, I, I am of the view, let's take my example, 30 million, 50% 50 is with insiders, so 15 of that. So 15 is left with the float. Let's say that they do the $6 million at the $3. So that's you know basically another 2 million shares. So 17 million share float. It's not, it's not meaningfully huge. Now, if you read the F1, which is something that now I, now that you mentioned it, the F1 actually says that the purpose of the proceeds uh, is to actually build the NGP, the build the uh, pre-commercial unit. And so with the money that they're raising here, um, alongside what they had prior to the IPO, um, so they were sitting at around 6 million CAD, I think, um, without the warrants. So I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but let's argue it's 6 million CAD. Um, so roughly four and a half US. And uh, let's say that there is six. So net of fees is probably five and a half, another five and a half million US. So that puts them at around 10 million US dollars. Now, an NGP, we know from prior conversations that they said it's going to cost five to seven million CAD. So, you know, three to three and a half to five million US. So that's half of what they would have. And call it another, you know, uh, 12 months plus of run uh, of, of 
uh, run rate. Um, and one thing that I want to clear up for people, because I do uh, see a couple of comments about, well, the, you know, the uplist comes with a cost, which is true. I mean, when you go on a bigger exchange, you're going to pay the biggest ex expense, as far as I know, is not the listing expense, by the way. The biggest expense is the insurance for the directors, which for a company, the stage of a duro, because they don't have uh, significant revenue, insurance is not as big as some people think. Um, that said, I think the all in all cost of being listed is going to be $1.52 million US per year. So, you know, the money that they'll have will be enough um, to build the NGP to go for a year and god knows what happens after that because you know they still have a lot of warrant they still have a lot of interest and guess what like as mary said the other day if this company goes 500 700 a billion dollars what prohibits them from raising a secondary raise after that nothing in my opinion i mean I, I'm not talking on their behalf. I'm just saying if I'm them, that's what I would do. If I get to five to seven, eight hundred million US, I definitely want to raise more money because that's a prudent thing to do. Um, and then, you know, now you have uh, enough room to even go from NGP to commercial units. So um, there's a lot to look forward to. Um, I think people to to the point that you mentioned uh ryan because that, that was a very good point the people that are celebrating the 40 percent up um it's great and for those people that decided to exit you know again we we can't hold anyone to everyone has their own uh money circumstances whatever but i really think the excitement is about to start like the real fireworks in my opinion is about to start could I be wrong? A hundred percent. But I do think everything I see in front of me tells me that the excitement is ahead of us, not behind us. And, you know, again, we, we each have our own expectation of where it should be. Um, could be right, could be wrong. Um, this is not a financial advice, but we are, uh, if, if I was excited one inch prior to, to these developments, I should be excited 10, 10x. Um, so that, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I mean, when it comes to excitement, like, I know what excitement is, and I haven't seen much excitement yet. It was like pulling teeth for two years. Like, I mean, I, how many times I saw Ryan make a video, and you can see the frustration because it's like, it's like people just didn't want to listen for how long my Aduro videos, they just didn't want to watch them. Like excitement, what excitement? Maybe you just excited yourself. <laughs> I am, I am, and, and that's the reality. I am excited about it. I think the um, days ahead, the months ahead are very exciting. And, um, you know, Hopefully, we'll live to see them and see see this uh, be a major success for ourselves and you know your your network and um, I think it, it, it's it's fascinating to see this company that a um, few years ago was uh, was not even public was was struggling to raise a couple of million bucks to be where it's at. It just gives you a lot of pride, but also the other thing is um this being part of this investment is actually uh, it, it gives you a lot of moral satisfaction because you are feeling that you're doing something like all the talking that we've done all the you know breaking our heads and saying you know this is a great opportunity um outside of the you know the financial side of it there is a social aspect of it that um, is not a greenwash. It's not a feel good. It is real do good by the environment. So 
if you are a, an environmentalist or not, if you want to, to stick to the financial side, this is this has a ton of financial reasons for you to be involved in. But if you want to have a duality of being a fi invested financially as well as have a reason, um, a purpose, this is this is as good as it gets, in my opinion. Uh, people get uh, short-sighted, I think, in understanding that uh, Aduro is well over 10 years old. And and I think, you know, this excitement, as fun as it is, we, we also need to remember that, it, you know, it has been many, many years in the making. And I never sensed that the upper management wasn't working as hard as they possibly could to to realize this, this opportunity for share owners. Um, I appreciated the transparency. I, I appreciated um, all of the updates. Um, I, you know, I always felt like everything, and you just touched on it, Yazan, with regard to their strategic and pointed goal through this uplisting to be for next generation. And in a true Aduro fashion, right? They're not going after the world here. They're looking strategically and, and, and really pragmatically at what they can realistically do and forecasting what they can not only say that they want to do, but actually do what they're saying that they want to do. And that has been proven out over and over and over again with Aduro. And I, I just think that's very, very impressive. And I think the upper management needs to be commended for their efforts up to this. And and congratulations to the Aduro team, because I know for Marcus and for Ofer, this goes back you know, more than 10 years ago. And, and good on them, because it, it is not easy to do this my friends, for anybody catching this, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I've said this, I've had it thrown back in my face. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have seen it come and go many, many times. I, I've never talked to a CEO that doesn't think that their company is the best thing since sliced bread. And you know, it's interesting. Ofer comes a lot uh, across different. He really does. It, he definitely has command of this company, but um, you know, he comes across different, he comes across sincere. And I think his, his words, as few as they might be, um, his actions truly do, um, back up what I feel as a share owner. And I choose to feel this way that they really do have the share owner in their best interest. And I believe that to, to continue into the future. Mariush, uh, turn it over to you, I guess, for the last words, guys. I, I could talk to you guys for the next 12 hours about this topic. I mean, I'm just getting fired up, but for the sake of the audience, I think maybe we keep it, you know, uh, under uh, under under an hour if we can, and perhaps maybe start to wrap it down and get closing thoughts on it. Uh, Mariush? I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice time now. It kind of... You know, we're getting validation on this name. Mariusz, I watched a few videos. Listen, I watched a few videos of you during the course of the last couple of years, man. And I was like, give this guy an effing bone, please. You deserve it, man. So, yeah, you deserve to enjoy yeah. this moment. Absolutely. You do too, Yazan. This, it, it, people don't understand. They think that they can just re- uh, you know, think of these opportunities in the stock market and they are not as easy to come by as people think that they are. I really want to stress that. Uh, so well earned to the both of you guys. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I, you know, the last two years, they've been an absolute hell being in this space. Absolute hell. Um, and, you know, now, now the, the things are happening and it's, it's just nice. It's just nice to, to have it happen, you know, because this is not the first time where I went through a f phase where you're just like, you know what, anything you touch just goes, turns into shit, you know, and you just go through months and months. And, and this turned into years of just constant pain, constant pain. And now it's finally, you know, coming around and you know, it's like it was a all this pain. It was like a down payment for a future success. Well said, my friend. I, I tell you what, we'll we'll continue to pulse in on this project going forward. 
I, I want to turn it over to Yazan for the last word. Um, I'm going to yield back my time to Yazan. You guys on the Independent Investor Channel, look, I, I'm going to continue to cover Aduro. Um, th this is not just an investment with me. Um, it, it is partially, like Yazan says, a very, very easy initiative to get behind. But for me, it represents something very personal to me. Um, I saw it right away. Um, it couldn't have come at a worse time in my life to be making a, another large commitment coming off of the heels of a pretty bad beat in the stock market. I didn't care. I wasn't apologetic. I'm not apologetic to a public audience, and I'm certainly not going to be apologetic to myself because when you see an opportunity like this, you, you have to seize the opportunity, man. I don't like the onus that you only live once. I do not because I think it promotes frivolous activity in people. But in this particular case, you got to put a little risk on the table because either good things or bad things are going to happen. But if you do nothing, rest assured, nothing will happen. I'll turn it over to Yazan here for the last word. Thank you, guys. I mean, look, I, I think the last two and a half years in the cap space, it has been a very rough uh, experiment. And... I do understand the other side of the token. I do understand the people that say we've been burned by X, Y, Z pre-revenue. I, I understand it. Why? Because during the euphoria, during the time of 2021, when interest rates were zero and money was being handed for free, um, yeah, I mean, the valuations went nuts. And the, when the music stopped and interest rates took a massive increase from zero to five and a half percent, guess what? It doesn't matter what equity class you had unless you were in the, even the max seven, you know, max seven did not catch a break until, until last October, 2023. Um, the point is that, um, as as you, Marish, say, look, you you really. It's not easy to get behind uh, a name, uh, and and trust me, it's it's taken me days, and even the people that have the best conviction, um, you know, one thing, one bad week, so on, can rattle that. Um, but I think this is one that is going to be very, very exciting to the years to come. I mean, look, I'm very proud of this company. I'm very proud to talk about it. I'm proud shareholder of it. Um, it's not common. And as you said, it's, it's not common. And again, even if you're a person that has been on the sidelines, I would love for people to cheer for this. This is a good thing. You need a company that resolves a major problem. We are eating plastic. <laughs> so if you don't want the solution, you want us to just eat plastic and have a no, no solution, great. But outside of reality, the reality is we have a world-class uh, solution to one of the mega trends. Um, and it's just about to get unraveled on, uh, or unleashed on a mega exchange, uh, whether that's two months, four months, I don't know. Um, but it's going to get, uh, it's going to get a lot of eyeballs and, you know, I'm extremely bullish. I'm extremely grateful for you guys time and, uh, looking forward to see this unfold in the months, years ahead. Yeah, I'll end on that note here. And I, I think the word to take away for the viewing audience is years. Um, I, I think to realize the maximum profit in this opportunity, um, I think we're years away from that. To Mariusz's point, enjoy it. Because these moments when they do happen based on conviction, based on your own due diligence, um, is worth acknowledging. Okay. Um, we want to be neutral with our application. Okay. Nobody came on this panel and put on a skirt and jumped up and down for you. Okay, we were businesslike and deliberate, just like we always do, with the aim of delivering information for anybody out there to the open social media conduit to, to pick up what we're trying to put down for you guys. 
Uh, on behalf of the Independent Investor Channel, on behalf of myself, I'd like to thank Yazan and Mariush. Unfortunately, Penny could not make it tonight. Um, I know you guys were were aware that um, she was uh, slated to come on. We will catch her at the next opportunity. Um, she had a last minute uh, obligation that she had to attend to. Uh, but I want to thank these two gentlemen for making their time. Um, their insights are invaluable, uh, uh, obviously. Every time I look at my portfolio now, I think of these two guys and the direct impact they made on me. And I, I really appreciate it. But uh, years away um, from enjoying this ride. And, and again, congratulations to the entire uh, Aduro team. This is a, a heck of a milestone in the evolution of the company. And it is to be acknowledged and it is to be celebrated, guys. So I'd invite you to subscribe to Mariusha's channel. If you like what you got coming down, make sure and subscribe to the uh, the channels. Uh, check out the featured channels. Um, it'll plumb you into the conduits that we enjoy here with our network of information. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and we'll catch you in the next one.